Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a Dell Inspiron laptop. This one is a Dell Inspiron 5570. The regulatory model is a P75F. Those information can be found on the bottom of the laptop on the sticker. Now in this video I'm going to go over how you can open it up and how you can change or replace or upgrade the RAM on this model. Uh, right away people always ask me like uh, what's the maximum capacity you can have in here I can tell you 16 I can tell you 32 but you guys are still not gonna trust me because you're gonna be asked I seen people asking a comment like uh, I asked a uh, Dell representative uh, Dell service uh, assistant and they told me it's like a 12 gig they told me it's an 8 gig max on the manual it tells you one number and another number somewhere else uh, so I'm not going to actually tell you exactly how much RAM you have. You can find it by yourself. I'll leave, I made a short video how you can see your maximum RAM capacity for your laptop or PC. It's about one minute long. I'll leave the link in my video description. You can, for this one, you can go up to 16 gig with no issue. We have upgraded them for clients with no problem. But you can check that link and see what's your maximum capacity. If yours is 32 gig, you can place double 16 so you can have 32 gig RAM in there. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can open it up and how you can re remove or replace them. Alright, I'm going to go over the tools that you're going to need. First of all, before we do anything, you're not going to lose anything from your files, your windows. You don't have to configure anything after replacing the RAM. So most of the questions that I get, like, do I have to do some configuration after? Do I, would I lose files? You're not going to lose anything and your files will be fine and your windows will be fine. You don't have to do any more configuration. All right, let's go over the tools. The tool that you're gonna be needing, it's simple, a screwdriver set. I'll recommend you guys grabbing iFixit. Grab the iFixit screwdriver set as they have one of the best bits out there. These are S2 class steel, that means they will last you many uh, years. So we're gonna grab a, a Phillips number one from this tool set. If you get the pro set, you get an opening tools, tweezers, and a few other stuff. But if you want to get the pro set, get the simple set. And for the opening tool, I'll be using a guitar pick, a metallic guitar pick. It's very really suitable to opening cases and covers. So with these two on hand, you're going to get it started. Make sure you power up the laptop completely. Now on the bottom of, in the bottom of the laptop, you're going to see a whole bunch of screws. We're going to remove all of them. There are a few screws that once you lose them up, they will not come out entirely. It will just stick a little bit out, so you, that's how much you want to pull it out. You don't want to yank it out. Nothing is going to happen. You're going to break a little bit of the casing, but it's okay. Just leave it there once you loosen it up, so like that. And remove the ones that actually do come out, and the ones they don't come out, leave them in there. See, this one came out. This one supposed not supposed to come out, but it came out. So the plastic on the other side is kind of damaged, but it's okay. So this one is not coming out. Leave it there. So go ahead, do this for all of them, remove all of them. Again, if you guys like my channel and you want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking that like and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. It will be a great motivation for me to make more videos, take requests, answer your questions in the comment area. I'll appreciate that. There we go. Once we remove all the screws, and this screw is supposed to be in this, not supposed to come out. I'm just going to leave it there so I don't lose. So these three screws at the back row, they're not supposed to come out entirely. So yeah, with those the screws loose, we're going to open up the laptop 45 degree. And we're going to grab the opening tool, in this case the guitar pick. And we're going to stick it between the bottom and palm rest, bottom cover and the palm rest. And what you want to do in here is just twist it backward like this. You want to do this all the way to the corners. Uh, work yourself to the back corner, to the left and right side, and do the left and right side, both of them. Right, once you open up the front and the side, you want to close down. All right, once you put it down, you want to grab it from front end of the ladder. You want to wiggle it around, lift it up, and pull it out, and it's going to release the back side. So this is the bottom cover, put it to one side. And right here, down here, you can see the battery and the RAM right over here. I know what people always uh, keep uh, panicking about, like before you touch the bat, the, the before you touch the RAM or anything, disconnect the battery. You do not need to remove the battery or anything. 
before touching the RAM or replacing your RAM or hard drive or anything like that. It's just absolutely not necessary. I've been doing this for so many years, more than 18 years is absolutely not necessary. Anyway, but if you want to be that paranoid person that you want to remove the battery or disconnect it, just grab this jack by the corners, the white one right there, and pull it back straight, and it will disconnect the jack right there and leave it there. Now you can actually work on the RAM if you want, then you feel a little bit safe. But if no, just leave it there and push it back in, and it's connected. All right, we have two RAM DIMMs in here, DIMM A and DIMM B. I don't know why this RAM is on DIMM B. This one's supposed to be on DIMM A in here. So yeah, to remove the RAM, it's really simple. All you need to do is to grab these two triggers beside the RAM and you wanna pull them away from each other. Just grab it and pull it from each other and the RAM will come out automatically in 45 degree angle. And uh, what you want to do in here, you just want to grab it in the same angle and pull it out in the same angle. You don't want to yank it towards the ceiling, otherwise you're going to crack the dim or you're going to break the RAM. And to put the RAM in, make sure the notch on the RAM matches the notch on the dim right there. So make sure it doesn't matter the orientation of the RAM chips or anything like that. If you try to put it the other way around, it's not going to go through. So you want to match the dim with a crack right there and bring it in, make sure it goes first in a 45 degree towards the dim, clicks all the way in. Sometimes it doesn't click, it just goes in. Once it's inside there, now you want to simply push it towards the motherboard. And you're going to hit two clicks, just like that. Once you hit those clicks, the uh, clips are straight. That means the RAM is in place. You want to grab the next RAM. Again, make sure the notch matches. Bring it down in 45 degree all the way towards the motherboard and then push it towards the, bring it towards the dim and push it towards the motherboard. And that's how you install the new RAM. This one is a four gig, because I had a four gig lying around. Now, before you put the cover on, you can test it out. You can power it on to see if it powers on. So you don't want to screw and unscrew all the time. Uh, one thing happens. Now, people always put a four gig or eight gig and power on and they don't get anything on the screen. Don't panic, it's normal because the motherboard is not doing a RAM check. So what do you want to do if you turn on the, the laptop? You want to wait 5 to 10 seconds once you install the new RAM. So let the motherboard do a RAM memory check. If after 5 to 10 seconds or even 15 seconds you don't get anything on the screen, power off completely the laptop and then remove both of the RAM. Put the new RAM on the DIMM slot A. Power on and wait 5 to 10 seconds. Once you get the screen, then you want to power off and then put the old RAM on DIMM B and then power on for 5 to 10 seconds, and that will work. For some reason, for laptops, this happens often. So if you don't get a screen and within first 5 to 10 seconds, uh, just switch the places and put one by one, the new one, wait 5 seconds, power off, and then put the second one. But right now, I'm going to power it on and see how it works. So I'm going to put both of them in. I don't know if you have any power in here, juice in this motherboard. I don't think there's any power. Let me get the charger, I think. So let's wait 5 to 10 seconds. I'm going to press F2 to go to the BIOS. I think it powered up. But yeah, it does have a power. So I'm going to press F2. To go to the BIOS is F2. So let's wait a few seconds. There we go, we got a logo. And I'm gonna keep tapping on F2. And we are inside the BIOS. I don't know if you guys can see that. But the BIOS is right there. You can see the whole menu and everything like that. It's really reflect reflective this screen. I don't know, screen brightness in here, if I can see. I doubt it, I can see screen brightness in here. So we have, I have the screen brightness up. And we can see to the system info. And in here I see I have 12 gig RAM, which is an uh, 8 gig and 4 gig RAM right there. So once you get this one, you can just power off and then just uh, turn on and just log into your Windows normally. So this one worked at the first. Alright, for this video, I'm not actually gonna go 
upgrade anything, we just well, for demonstration, I'm just gonna pull it out, leave it out. And then once you finish with that, just grab the bottom cover, bring it up, place it straight right on top, and push the corners, push the front, make sure you hit those clicks. And first thing you wanna do, you wanna put those uh, screws that are sticking out, just push them in all the way in. And then you wanna make sure the bottom and top casings are clicking together. If you open it up and you see tiny opening right here like this, you wanna pinch them together on every corner. You wanna hear that big click. Go do the one in the side on the back. And the last thing is to just put all the screws that you remove from the bottom casing. And again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys to do your own upgrade for your Dell Inspiron 5570. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just gonna finish up putting up the bottom screws.